G'day YouTubers, episode 11 in this series brings us to Green Island. Now I've got some spots for you and got some information about where you can fish around Green Island, but I want to spend a fair bit of this video talking about the technique of fishing the shallow reefs around Moreton Bay. This is applicable to all of the shallow reefs. I have tried to explain it in words in other videos. I feel that I've been struggling a little bit to try and explain what I mean in words. So I've got this sketch and they say a picture's worth a thousand words. So I hope this rather crudely drawn sketch is worth a couple of hundred anyway. And with the aid of the sketch, I hope to make a better job of trying to explain what I mean by fishing off the drop off. I'll get to that a little bit later in the video. And now we come to Green Island and that brings back a lot of fishing memories and some memories of some stories that happened there. And I'm gonna share one of them with you. It would have been back in the early 70s, I guess. I was working with a fellow and he owned a plywood speedboat. It had a converted car engine as an inboard. That was pretty common in the bay in those days. And he used to like to fish Green Island. He took the family over there fishing one day and apparently one of the plywood sheets sprung a bit and the boat started to leak. And he says that he only made it back because he had all the family bailing it out as he drove back. The way he told the story was just hilarious and I do wish I could do it justice, but I'm just no good at telling stories like that. I never have been. But anyway, it earned him the nickname of Leaky for the rest of the time that he worked there. Even though I can't make the story as funny as the original storyteller, the moral is still there. Doesn't matter how bad things look when you're on the water, don't give up, keep trying, and chances are you will make it. The surest way I know to fail at anything is not to try at all. Anyhow, you're not here to listen to stories, you're here to hear about the fishing at Green Island, and we'll talk about that now. Before I start talking about the fishing now, I'll just mention that Green Island is an overnight anchorage. It's not a bad anchorage if the wind's from the east. You can get in close to the island on the western side, and that's not a bad anchorage. I don't think I'd be wanting to anchor at Green Island if the wind was from any other direction. I think the western side of Green Island is the only decent anchorage for a bit of wind. And there's plenty of other islands around that are much better if you're looking to shelter from wind from any other direction. I superimposed a relief map of the ocean floor over the island here so that you can see where the drop-offs are. As you can see, it's a lot deeper in close to the island on the western side and it shelves off more slowly on the eastern side where most of the reef is. Again, I've come across some surveys of the ocean floor where a diver's gone down and taken a survey, spot survey, of a small section of the ocean floor. I've transposed those findings from the original map onto my map, so they may not be 100% in the right position, but given the scale of the map, I think they're pretty close. It'll give you an idea of what to expect on the bottom, but I've got another one a little bit later that'll give you an even better idea. I certainly agree with the other one. Not so sure I'm 100% behind this one. But that could just be because it's a spot survey and the spot that they surveyed had particular characteristics and 50 feet away had totally different characteristics. This is the other map that I was talking about. I'm much more in agreement with what this one shows. You've got the big blue area running north-south on the eastern side of the island. That's your main reef. The blue area on the northern side of the island denotes the northern reef. I don't actually know that reef very well. There are patches of coral joining the northern reef to the one on the eastern side. It's not very extensive around that northeast corner, but there is coral there. That blue dot they've got marked out as an isolated dot off the northeast corner of the island is another reef apparently. I didn't know that one was there. I've never come across it. So that's something to investigate. There's two patches of hard coral reef marked on the western side of the island. Can't say that I ever intentionally targeted fishing in those areas on the western side, but I would often drop a line down when we're anchored up for the night and just looking at where the reefs are marked, I'm pretty sure we would have been anchored up either over it or fairly close to it. I don't recall catching anything remarkable there. I probably did catch a few rather unremarkable pan-sized fish, but never targeted that, and I don't recall anyone ever telling me they targeted those western reefs, so that's a bit of an unknown area if you want to have a look at it for yourself. 
I want to talk about how I fish these shallow reefs around the bay once again. I know I've covered it in other videos, but they say a picture's worth a thousand words, and this time I've got a sketch to help back up what I'm trying to explain. Now hopefully it's going to make a bit more sense. I do apologise for my drawing skills. I know they're atrocious. I put some text in the drawings and I put some arrows in there, and I'm going to talk about it as we go along. And I sincerely hope that you can get past my poor drawing skills and understand what I'm attempting to draw. We'll see how we go with it. I've always found that there's more small fish up in the shallows of the reef. Not to say there's no big fish there. You will find some big fish there chasing the small fish, trying to eat them. The reason I don't fish that area is because of the snags. It doesn't matter if I, even if I have no sinker on at all, just the weight of the bait taking it down. I get a lot of snags, lose a lot of gear. I used to fish it many years ago, but these days I fish further out away from the reef. I get less snags. I reckon I get as many keepers as I ever did in closer to the reef. Fewer throwbacks with small fish, and I lose a lot less gear. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a win. As the reef starts to drop off into deeper water, the coral thins out and you get more isolated, well, in the case of the shallow reefs around the bay, uh, rain coral, usually. Get some of that flat uh, water lily looking coral, I don't know what it's called. But it's these isolated patches that the fish tend to hang around a bit. If you've ever snorkeled up north around the barrier reef, you get these big bombies that are out from the main reef. Some of them were 20 feet or more high, and they're just an isolated coral structure coming up from the ocean floor. And if you dive down around them, you'll see the big fish hanging out in the crevices around looking for the small fish to ambush them. And that's what I mean, that seems to happen around these rain corals as well in the shallower reefs. You can see it on the sounder when it starts to thin out, you get the more isolated clumps. That's what I look for as the indication of where I want my line to sort of come into the edge of that. After the end of the coral, there's usually uh, rubble down underneath that, going down towards the bottom of the drop-off. I haven't dived that many spots, so I can't say that they're all the same, but the ones that I have dived on, there's been sort of coral rubble down underneath that, broken bits, etc. And larger fish tend, in my experience, to conjugate between the bottom of the drop off and the end of the coral. Now, I'm not saying you won't catch larger fish in other areas. You definitely will. Just that I've caught more of them in that area and with less snags. So that's the area that I target. Is targeting this area a hard and fast drill of mine? Well, definitely not. There are no hard and fast drills in fishing, not as far as I'm concerned, but it's my first try area. Sometimes I might move in over the reef, just depends on circumstance. And just because the picture is more valuable, I've highlighted that target area in the picture, so you can sort of understand exactly that area that I'm looking to target. I want my line to drop somewhere between the end of the coral and maybe just into that end of the coral area, down into the bottom of the drop-off. And if you think about the way your line's going to swing from the boat, if you cast it down, it's going to swing in an arc underwater. So if you cast in the exact right spot, your line's going to pass a bit of that area. Of course, with no current, you've got to compensate for current. And in this slide, the red line represents the arc that in a perfect world, your line would travel through if you cast it out into the right spot. But of course, the world isn't perfect and there's all sorts of currents underwater that are going to drag your line here, there and everywhere. So one cast isn't going to follow that perfect arc and cover most of that area. But you can do it in multiple casts. If you're not doing any good casting into one spot, just try and make your line go down into a different spot. You can probably do most of that without even moving your boat. This is a traditional 2D sonar image of a section of the reef on the eastern side of Green Island. As you can see, there's some fish on top of the reef. There's a lot of small bait fish on top of the reef. There's a few larger ones. 
Some of them are just above the coral, some of them are down in amongst the coral. And yes, you can catch them, but in my experience, you catch a lot more snags. Does that make me a lazy fisherman? Well, maybe it does. I'm out there to have fun. I like to get a feed as well if I can, but the most important thing is to have an enjoyable day fishing, and I don't have that if I'm continually retying hooks. Now, this is another image from the eastern side of Green Island. In this case, the boat was traveling south along the edge of the reef. If you look in the side imaging view at the top, you'll see to the right-hand side of the boat, there's a lot of heavy reef. To the left-hand side of the boat, it's isolated parts of the reef. So I'm traveling along the line pretty much on the edge of the reef where it starts to thin out. And what I would want to do is fish from that point off to the left of the boat. Now, of course, I was traveling along then, so I would have had to anchor up and do it and figure out which way the tide was running so they anchored up in the right spot. It's, well, actually, these days I would use the Mincator because it's much easier to get onto that right spot, or at least I find it so. But you can anchor up, and, you know, I've been out fishing and I've seen blokes pull up their anchor and move a few feet, and I'll do that four, five, six times to get into the spot that they want to be in. And when I say a few feet, I might mean 20, 30 feet. But they're not moving that far. They're just trying to get it so that their lines will go back into the zone where they think the fish are. I said before, I might be a bit of a lazy fisherman, but pulling up the anchor continually has never really appealed to me. Except when I was in the tinny, I didn't mind doing it then, but I mostly had half cabin baits where you got to crawl through the cabin to get to the anchor. So it's not been a favorite chore of mine. My go-to option where the fish aren't biting is to throw a few handfuls of burley over and see if I can bring the fish to me before I'll up anchor and move to another spot. And I certainly don't bother for the sake of moving 20 or 30 feet. I reckon in those circumstances the burley should do the trick. For the fishing you'll catch a good variety of fish around Green Island. Snapper, sweet lip, cod and parrot, probably in that order of commonality, are the most caught species around Green Island. I've done most of my fishing on the eastern side of the island, along the drop off there, probably five metres of water, maybe five to six metres of water. Just sound around, it's pretty obvious where the coral is and where the drop off ends, and have a go at what I said earlier about fishing that section of the drop off between the end of the coral and the bottom of the drop off. As with Mud Island, people have told me that if I go out deeper, I'll catch some bigger fish. As I recall, they sort of indicated around the seven or eight metre mark, but I've never tried it, so if you're interested, give it a go. And if you do give it a go and you do do well, I would like to hear about it in the comments. And just while I'm thinking about fishing species, I'll mention that I have heard, only second or third hand, but I have heard that some of the exotic species have been caught around Green Island. Things like red emperor and coral trout. In that area, I'd be very surprised if there was any keepers. I expect they'd all be small. But just imagine what a great fishing story that would make to pull one of them in at Green Island. Of course, you need a picture to back it up, but there you go. That's something to aim for. As with Mud Island, the mackerel come through there. As long as you're not fishing too many people out of your boat, it's not a problem to keep an unattended line floating a pilly out the back, and you never know what you're going to get surprised with. I've got some marks here for Green Island. I just want to reiterate, and I know I harp on this a little bit, but I just want to say that a mark doesn't guarantee catching fish. All a mark means is that there were fish in the past and there may be fish there in the future, but there might not be fish there on the day you are there. You need to take that mark, go there, turn your sounder on and hunt around to see if you can find the fish. If they're not on that mark, try another mark. Because the reef is so extensive there, sound the area between the marks. You never know where they're going to be on a particular day. You have to put some effort into finding them, and then you'll catch them. Yeah, I'm sorry to harp on this so much, but I've taken so many people out in my boat over the years that think that having a mark is the holy grail of fishing and that you're going to catch fish if you get on that mark. And the reason you don't catch fish is you're too far away from the mark. And it's just not true. Now some of the marks shown here are public marks and some of them are roughly the area that I caught fish in back in the day. I didn't have a GPS back in the day when I used to fish Green Island a bit, 
So I used to line up things on the island, maybe take a compass bearing to them. So I knew roughly that I was in the spot, and I do mean roughly. The mark isn't important. You do a lot better if you've got a sounder, which I didn't have when I was fishing out of the tender, but I still caught a few. I suppose you could say in that case where I was fishing out of the tender that having the mark was a little bit more important, but in those days the mark was just being far enough out from the reef to cast into the right spot. So all that being said, these marks are a guide, use them as such, and I do hope you catch some fish by using them. I did mention earlier that Green Island isn't a great anchorage unless the wind is predominantly from the east and you anchor on the west side. But it did just occur to me to mention something else about sheltering from wind in the bay. Back in the day, we used to listen to the radio just after the news every hour. Brownie's Coast Watch would be on giving the bay weather report. I think that was on Port KQ, but the actual station doesn't matter. Point is, that was your weather report for the conditions on the bay back then. And he announced that there was going to be an unexpected change in the wind or there was a storm coming or whatever, and you'd see a lot of boats up anchor and move. I was up anchored and followed the old adage of any port in a storm. So if it was going to turn bad, I just headed for the nearest safe anchorage. But you'd see a lot of boats, they'd head back to the mainland, back to their home base. I always thought that was a mistake because nine times out of 10, it's gonna take you longer to get back to your home base than it is to get to the nearest safe anchorage. And the prime directive on the water is stay safe. It's not so bad these days. You have all sorts of weather apps and all sorts of weather notifications and weather alerts. You should be pre-warned of anything that's going to turn bad with plenty of time to do something about it. But unfortunately, these things go wrong and it's not always the case. So if it's going to go bad, if you have a timeline of when the bad weather's going to arrive, decide whether you've got time to get back home. And if not, just look for the nearest shelter you can find. I've been in a storm where I went to the nearest safe shelter and we were stuck there for three days before the wind died down enough to move comfortably to somewhere else. I was in a big boat at the time so we could have moved safely but perhaps not comfortably. So I just wanted to bring that up. Just think about what you're doing and make the safe decision even if it means you can't get to work the next day. Now fishing around Green Island is pretty much the same as fishing around the other shallow reefs in Moreton Bay very very light don't put any sinker on at all if you can get your bait down without it if you've got a bit of a run in the tide and you need some weight to get your bait down put the very minimum amount of weight that you have to have to get that bait down particularly if you're casting in over the edge of the coral if that bait goes down with a heavy sinker you're pretty much guaranteed you're going to get hooked up on the coral especially if a fish grabs it he's going to run with it it goes straight into the coral with it sitting on the bottom with heavy sinker and you're going to lose your fish and your rig. So first point, very, very little weight. Generally, I used to fish the shallow reefs with a 15 pound mono line. You could go down to 10 pound. These days I prefer braid, but mono would still be okay. I did very well on mono back in the day, but anywhere from a 12 to 20 pound braid should get you by. Hook size, 4O was my preferred hook. I used to use J hooks exclusively, uh, never used circle hooks until the last couple of years. Didn't like them when I first started using them, but now I'm a convert. I do like the circle hooks, so a 4O circle hook, a 3O circle hook maybe. Bigger the hook you go on these shallow reefs, you're going to get a lot of bites, but you're not going to get many hookups. Circle hook doesn't do much damage to the fish. So they're kind of fun to land, and even if they're too small, treat them nice, get the hook out of them, send them back on their way. They'll grow up and someone else will catch them another day, and you'll have had a little bit of fun in the meantime. As for bait, the best quality bait you can get. In the past, I've caught my very best fish on fresh squid bait. When we had the big bait, I used to put a spotlight over the side and I'd stand on the deck with my bow and arrow and shoot the squid as they came up to have a look at the light of a night time. At that time, I'd never heard of squid jigs. I hadn't heard of squid jigs until a few years back and I still haven't mastered them. I have not caught a squid on a squid jig yet. I have caught them on lures. I have caught them on hooks with squid bait on them. I have got plenty of them with the bow and arrow but I've never caught one on a squid jig. That's the circumstance I hope to remedy in the near future. But anyway, what we're talking about is the bait you should use. Now, fresh squid, freshly caught squid is the very best. 
doesn't matter whether it's dead or alive, I don't think there's a lot of difference to be honest, as long as it's fresh. The next thing is good quality frozen bait that you've just bought. In that, anything works. You can use pillies. I generally cut the pilly into two or three pieces when I'm fishing the shallow reefs. You can use squid. Don't want the huge squid if you're fishing the shallow reefs. The smaller squid's good. Not the rubbish you buy at the garage or so Get some good squid. Prawns, mullet, any bait fish you catch, take a fillet off of it, cut the fillet up into strips and bait that on. That's always good. Find somewhere that's got really good bait. Now, I've given a plug to Mr. Bait in the last video. I'm going to do it again because you know, he just has really good bait. I've done better on bait that I've bought from him than I've done on bait that I've bought anywhere else. Go and visit him or find someone that's got good bait like him in your area and you'll improve your catch rate for sure. That's it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope it helps you to catch some fish around Green Island. There's usually a few there. One last tip about fishing Green Island, same as any other of the shallow reefs around Moreton Bay, it's best done when there's not too many boats there. More boats there, more noise, less fish. Just stands to reason. So if you're fortunate enough to be able to get out during the week, that's the time to go. If you can't get out during the week, try really early in the morning on the weekends or really late in the afternoon getting on towards dusk. The majority of boats are not there at those times. If you'd like to see more of my videos, go to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time, good fishing.